This is the first of a series of short uh, video lessons dedicated to the Tudor dynasty, <clears throat> which embodies the Renaissance in, um, in, in British history and literature as well, obviously. Um, it is important for you to understand, though, that uh, um, in order to grasp um, the series of events that led to the birth of the Tudor dynasty, it is essential, and I strongly recommend, that you attentively study the notes on the chapter dedicated to, uh, to the Tudor dynasty that lead up to, uh, to this development. Um, it is important to understand uh, how uh, relevant the Hundred Years' War is, which of course, as we have outlined in class, is mainly um, uh, concerned with uh, uh, the power between the French and the England uh, thrones, um, and how, within the Hundred Years' War, eventually the War of the Roses began. The War of the Roses stemming from uh, the dispute between the two leading families, the two leading cadet families of the Plantagenet uh, dynasty, those um, that of the uh, Lancaster and that of the York, who fight one another to take over the uh, the throne of England and consequently that of France as well. Um, uh, the War of the Roses is uh, crushed um, by many uh, rebellions that uh, uh, ensued to depose um, the king that was considered the usurper by the other uh, by the other family. The most successful of this of these rebellions was that that took place in 1485 and carried out by Henry Tudor. Um, Henry Tudor would, did not have any royal blood, however, he claimed a throne on the basis that he was the grandson of Catherine of Valois and Owen Tudor, who was Catherine of Valois, as you will uh, see. Catherine of Valois was the widow of King Henry V. Um, when uh, her husband died, her son Edward um, IV was the uh, legitimate heir to the throne, but he was a minor and um, therefore the throne was in the hands of a series of regents. After the king's death, Catherine of Valois started a, a secret love relationship with Owen Tudor, who was her wardrobe's keeper. When uh, the rumors of this affair became too insistent, the two lovers, Catherine of Valois and Owen Tudor, decided to marry um, without uh, previously acquiring the king's uh, uh, consent, because, as we've said, the king was too young to, uh, to give his consent and they uh, wanted to avoid any uh, disapproval from the uh, various regions that at the time were holding power. So um, their marriage was later considered not valid and all the offsprings that uh, were born were not considered legitimate. Despite all this, um, Henry Tudor claimed the throne and uh, as a representative of the Lancaster uh, dynasty. And since the Battle of Bosworth proved uh, successful, he did take over power and was very intelligent in marrying immediately Elizabeth of York, this way um, binding the two families together and putting an end to a long dispute that had racked England before his time. Now, the main uh, concern that uh, Henry Tudor had was that to secure the throne and acquire for it the full legitimacy. Uh, in his time, this was acquired in, especially because he did have male descendants, his firstborn being Arthur and his second male son uh, being Henry, who came to the throne at his death uh, as Henry VIII. 
But um, Henry Tudor, Henry the Seventh, was also a um, uh, very intelligent in uh, realizing that uh, not only did he have to um, did he have to uh, reign over England, but most importantly, he had to rule over the country. He did this by centering all the power in his hands and um, giving only a few trusted ministers a just a limited power. In any case, nothing took place in his uh, reign without him approving it or knowing uh, every detail about it. Um, he was also uh, a, an astute man because he um, uh, was able to um, um, encourage uh, competent and uh, loyal men who were on his side by uh, giving them uh, due recognition and privileges that others do not have. At the same time, he proved to be very cruel and uh, fierce in crushing all his enemies. As far as his uh, uh, reign is concerned, the most important achievements were certainly the fact that he encouraged trade and especially he favored the development of the cloth industry as long as um, investing in shipbuilding both for a merchant fleet and a strong military English defense. The second video of the series will regard Henry VIII.